moving now from objections to Papias in particular into objections to the reliability of the patristic tradition as a whole, there is an often repeated objection to the reliability of the patristics based upon the generally accepted priority of Mark's gospel. There are actually two objections here. The first objects that the witnesses to the traditional authorship of the gospels are unreliable because they all claim that Matthew was written first, even though most scholars now accept that Mark was first. The defender of the traditional authorship of the Gospels may, of course, challenge the assumption that Mark really was written first. As Martin Moss points out, Supposition is not evidence. The presupposition of a certain solution to the synoptic problem cannot be used as evidence for it without circularity. In my four-part series on the synoptic problem, I argued in detail that the arguments for Mark in priority are poor, and that there is indeed compelling evidence that Matthew was the first gospel to have been written. I thus refer viewers to that series to see my extended answer to this argument. The second objection concerns why Matthew should have used Mark, as the theory of Mark in priority demands that he did, since Matthew was an eyewitness and Mark was not. Why would a first-hand account need to depend upon a second-hand account? Michael Cott contends that, the theory that Matthew was the evangelist is hard to square with the standard solution to the synoptic problem, namely Mark in priority. It seems incredible that Matthew, an apostle and eyewitness of Jesus, would have relied so heavily on a biography of his teacher penned by a non-apostle and non-eyewitness. Dale Allison likewise asks, Would an apostle who accompanied Jesus have used so little of his own reminiscence, but rather have followed Mark so closely? Again, I reiterate that there are no sound reasons for thinking that Matthew's gospel is dependent upon Mark's gospel. But let us put this aside and, for the sake of argument, and for the sake of making the thesis of traditional authorship acceptable to a wider group of people, let's assume that Mark in priority is true. Let's assume that Matthew really did use Mark's gospel as a source. If church tradition is right about Peter being the ultimate source behind Mark's gospel, there is immediately a clear reason for Matthew to have used Mark. Mark was the authoritative account of one of Jesus' closest followers. Peter was privy to information which Matthew was not, so it is not inconceivable that Matthew should have used Mark, as John Wenham says. It is conceivable that Matthew the Apostle could have taken Mark as his starting point, adding fresh material and weaving into it his special emphases. This is the more credible if Matthew had recognized that Mark's gospel had the authority of Peter behind it. Moss makes the same point as Wenham, but with a little more flair, saying, Matthew's close adherence to the narrative of Mark presents no mystery. Knowing as he did that Mark had been essentially reporting the teaching of Peter, he made it his business to pay homage to the recorded words of the senior apostle whenever he had no good reason to do otherwise. What else would we expect from a man whose whole career had meant deferring to a higher authority? The problem of Matthew copying Mark only arises when we reject the evidence of the early fathers as to the source of Mark.